Salamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Sending the reward of Umrah to your departed loved ones or those unable to undertake the journey themselves is a profound expression of love and devotion. At Pure Passage we specialize in performing Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased family members, ensuring they receive the sacred gift. We understand the challenges and impossibilities some face in embarking on this spiritual journey. Pure Passage is here to alleviate the physical and financial burdens, offering a professional and reliable service that takes care of every detail. Let us help you fulfill this obligation for your loved ones with utmost care and attention. Make it happen today, contact Pure Passage and secure this immense reward by performing Umrah on behalf of those close to your heart. Bi'ithni Allah. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, by now we should all know that pork is bad for you. But the reality is of course that people worldwide still consume it. Especially Hong Kong is amongst the top consumers of pork in 2023. We have plenty of studies pointing towards pork being detrimental for your health, being full with parasites and worms and whatnot, but people simply do not want to understand the simple truth. Even back in the day, in the old ages, we had scriptures, right? The Torah, the Bible, and finally the Quran. All of those scriptures warn against pork. But still, the Christians do not want to hear anything about it. So today, guys, we're going to have a concise list of four points why pork scientifically is bad for you. Guys, before we jump into the video, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. All right, number one, absolutely shocking, and this is something that I never heard about, hepatitis E. Here we read, in developed nations, pork liver is the top food-based transmitter of hepatitis E, a virus that infects 20 million people each year and can lead to acute illness, fever, fatigue, jaundice, vomiting, joint pain, and stomach pain. The acute illness can even lead to an enlarged liver or sometimes liver failure and even death. Yeah, I don't think bacon is worth it, man. So now what's really important for pork eaters is, of course, how alarming are the pork contamination stats. In America, about one out of every 10 store-bought pig livers tests positive for hepatitis E. Guys, this is absolutely insane, man. We're not talking about slight contamination, some byproduct. No, we're talking about hepatitis E. And one out of 10 pig livers test positive for hepatitis E in America. Disgusting. The rate is 1 out of 15 in the Netherlands, 1 out of 20 in the Czech Republic. And in Germany, that's where I grew up, they found out that 1 out of 5 pork sausages were contaminated with hepatitis E. So as you can see, this does not only apply to people that eat pork liver, nor to simple German pork sausages. Literally everybody in Germany eats those damn pork sausages. It is so so common you could say is the German species specific diet. One out of five pork sausages is contaminated. Man, if you buy a pack of sausages, that pack has 20 sausages. So there you can see that every single pack, therefore, must have contamination of hepatitis E. How absolutely repulsive this is. The same applies to France as well. In France, you have traditional pig liver sausage or raw sausages. They call them saucisson. And therefore, they find that half the local population shows evidence of hepatitis E infection. I guess pork is just too yummy. The article continues, we can find the same hepatitis E concerns in Japan and in the UK too. But what is really hilarious is that people just cannot fathom to quit eating pork. No, instead of just quitting pork, they come up with tools and tricks. 
Apart from total pork abstinence, the best way to slash hepatitis E risk is in the kitchen. For virus deactivation, cooking pork products for at least 20 minutes to an internal temperature of 71 Celsius or 160 Fahrenheit seems to do the trick. Okay, not eating pork would be just too easy. Number two and even more shocking, multiple sclerosis. I worked in a hospital back in the day and I saw patients that had multiple sclerosis is such an unbelievably detrimental sickness. Young people in their 20s with MS. Absolutely devastating. And now we find out that pork consumption can actually lead to MS. I've never heard that before, but apparently here we read that this was known since the 1980s. The robust link between pork and MS, multiple sclerosis, has been known at least since the 1980s. When researchers analyzed the relationship between per capita pork consumption and MS across dozens of countries. While pork averse nations like Israel and India were nearly spared from MS degenerative grips, more liberal consumers, <laughs> liberal consumers, yeah, such as West Germany and Denmark faced sky high rates. And as I said, yes, I worked in a hospital in Germany and therefore I saw young people with MS. What would have been interesting here is, of course, to show Muslim countries how high is MS within Muslim countries. This year is very fascinating as well. We read the potential for pig brain to trigger nerve related autoimmunity isn't just observational hunch either. Between 2007 and 2009, a cluster of 24 pork plant workers mysteriously fell ill with progressive inflammatory neuropathy, which is characterized by MS-like symptoms such as fatigue, numbness, tingling, and pain. The source of the outbreak, so-called pig brain mist, tiny particles of brain tissue blasted into the air during carcass processing. So look how disgusting and fascinating this is at the very same time. Simply particles from the slaughter process, little brain particles can infect people around it. So do you understand now why you shouldn't slaughter pigs? Do you understand now why you shouldn't come near them at all? Your Bible states the very same thing. Leviticus 11.7 and the pig, for though it divides the hoof, thus making a split hoof, it does not chew the cut, it is unclean to you. More detail we find in Leviticus 11, 3 to 8. The pig has a split hoof divided in two, but doesn't chew the cut, and so it is unclean. You may not eat their meat, nor touch their carcasses. They are unclean to you. So here within the Bible, we find a warning against touching the carcasses, the dead bodies of pigs. Now, scientifically, you can understand why. Not only the touching process, but being around the slaughter process itself is enough to potentially give you multiple sclerosis. Number three, liver cancer and cirrhosis. Liver problems tend to trail closely on the heels of some predictable risk factors, namely hepatitis B and C infection, exposure to aflatoxin, a carcinogen produced by mold and excessive alcohol intake. Yeah, this basically sums up the diet of the Westerner, pork meat and alcohol. And then everybody's wondering, why do we get heart disease? Why are we getting sick? Here we can read, for decades, pork consumption has faithfully echoed liver cancer and cirrhosis rates around the world. In multi-country analysis, the correlation between pork and cirrhosis mortality clocked in at 0.4. And this has been examined since 1965. We have data from 1965, from the mid 70s and from 1996. Very important to note as well is that beef, by contrast, remained liver neutral or even protective in these studies. We are not going to make science our god, but it's still very interesting to see, of course. The Muslims eat beef, they do not eat pork. The Christians eat pork, the Hindus, on the other hand, do not eat beef. But here in this scientific study, we can find that beef, in contrast, remained liver neutral or even protective. So you tell me who's on the right side. Number four, your senior. I hear this word for the very first time in my life. For years, pork's precautionary motto was well done or bust, which yet again means you have to cook it to the ground in order to consume it in the first place. Why would you? If you look, for example, at sashimi, 
fish or you look at steak tartare beef you can eat it raw no problem whatsoever but of course you cannot do that with pig with pork why is that so because it's riddled with parasites that's a parasite that is a parasite it's so gross look you can start you can see them starting to crawl their way out this one's look. moving oh gross I am never eating pork again. A consequence of fears about trichinosis, a type of roundworm infection that ravaged pork consumers throughout much of the 20th century. So if hepatitis wasn't enough and liver cancer, now you can get some ringworms on top of that. Still love bacon though. Ursinosis acute symptoms are rough enough. Fever, pain, bloody diarrhea. Yummy. But its long-term consequences are what should really ring alarm bells. Victims of your senior poisoning face a 47 times higher risk of reactive arthritis, a type of inflammatory joint disease triggered by infection. Even children become post your senior arthritis targets, sometimes requiring chemical synovectomy, the injection of osmic acid into a troubled joint, to relieve persistent pain. Yeah, well, that doesn't sound alarming at all. <laughs> so now let's read the conclusion. The jury's still out for two of Pork's problems. Hepatitis E and Yersinia. Aggressive cooking and safe handling are enough to minimize the risk. Oh, well, then just proceed. And due to a shortage of controlled Pork-centric research, Ugh. Capable of establishing causation, Pork's other red flags spring from epidemiology, a field rife with confounders and unjustified confidence. Worse, many diet and disease studies lump Pork together with other types of red meat, diluting whatever associations might exist with Pork alone. These issues make it hard to isolate the health effects of pig-derived products and determine the safety of their consumption. Blah, 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 blah. Alright, so this is it for today's video. After reading this article, you had four extremely strong points. Hepatitis E, liver cancer and what not, tapeworms. They did not even mention parasites, but nevertheless, in the end, they come to the conclusion, you know what, guys, as long as you cook your pork, it's A-OK. -okay. Just go for it. Feed it to your children. Who cares about the potential arthritis, right? Let them die. Let them have bacon. It is so much more important than anything else. Guys, point of the story is every single scripture, the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran warn of pork. Now people say, well, we are secularists. This is just dumb stuff from back in the day. We do not believe in those fables. This is just a fantasy book. All right, fine. Then look into your science that you worship as a god. The science points out pretty clearly here that pork is extremely bad for your health. It's just what it is. You can see it clearly there. But then they're still going to come up with excuses and try to find a trick. Well, if you heat it over 70 degrees, that should do the job. If you look into the data, if you look into foodborne illnesses, you look into viral infections, you look into parasites, tapeworms, etc., it is always pork. Now they need to narrow it down further. Of course, you cannot conduct such a study. Basically, what they're telling you is, you know what? We need to do a pork exclusive study. Let's just take a bunch of people and feed them only pork. Eat pig only for a whole year. And then we can determine truly if it was the pig or not. Because the people that eat pig, they eat beef as well. They eat chicken as well. So how would we potentially know? We have absolutely no clue, right? Man, this is absolutely ridiculous, of course. Just take the people that eat pig and other things and then take people such as Muslims or Jews that do not eat pig and eat other things. Like that, you can compare. You can see if, for example, multiple sclerosis is running wild within Muslim countries or not. Like that, you can narrow it down. But ultimately, people don't want to do it. There is this funny saying that states it is easier to change a man's religion than to change his diet. 
And this truly holds true. I know this from back in the day during my vegan times or even as a fitness trainer back in the day, I saw it. It was the hardest thing for people to simply stop eating processed junk. There's so much emotional attachment to foods. Guys, face the truth. Pork is bad for you. You don't have to convert to Islam, even though it would be better for you, of course. Simply stop eating pork, man. It is poisoning you. Replace the bacon with beef bacon. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support. And now, And as always, may God bless you all, much love and peace.